Hey! In this and the next few videos I will show you a smart way of getting used to watercolors. Namely, I will make monochromatic ink and watercolor illustrations. This kind of drawings is a really charming transitional form between ink drawings, which tend to be predictable, and watercolor paintings, which often give quite random results at the beginning. I will paint over a previously made ink drawing. I used here waterproof Faber-Castell pens, and the word waterproof is crucial here. Let's get to work. As you can see, the drawing looks almost finished. Even shadows were suggested with pens. Before we start our struggles with watercolors, it's good to mask these elements, which shouldn't be accidentally covered by flowing paint. I'm placing masking fluid on the roof's edge and the trees in the foreground. Then I'm waiting for about 15 minutes. The next step is also quite easy. Painting the sky with clear water. When the paper is still wet, we may use more or less diluted paint. Sepia tones fit historical subjects very well. The less number of colors, the easier it is to control them. We have to focus only on the intensity of paint. Monochromatic doesn't have to mean only one paint, at least in my opinion. Here are normal brown, dark brown and light brown. If needed, we can also dilute it when it's already on paper. Just use the same brush with clear water. If the paint gets out of control, we can simply take it away with a paper towel. When the sky is completely dry, we can take off the masking fluid. Looks ugly, I know. Large plains like roofs should be also wet. Painting is so much easier then. An important general rule. It's better to paint too delicate than too strong, especially if we already have a detailed ink drawing. It's easier to fix some mistakes and you can always add some paint later if needed. For the darkest areas, I've been placing few layers of the dark brown paint. At the beginning, watercolors can be frustrating. At least I've been thinking so. In fact, it's quite a user-friendly medium. After some time of accustoming, you are able to create interesting textures in a very simple way. Salt is my must-have to create vegetation, sand and stones. As you can see, watercolors can be used in a very precise way. The only things you need is a thin brush and relatively dense paint. To achieve light elements, I just surround them with darker paint. It really helps to pop them up.
an important thing. Shadows shouldn't be opaque. Try to make them semi-transparent. Painting details with a thin brush feels almost like drawing them with a pencil. Just like in the case of other natural textures, I paint vegetation on wet paper and add some salt. Foreground elements should be highly contrasted, especially in the case of monochromatic works. Would you like to know a very simple way to paint water? Just paint horizontal lines and then blur them with a wet brush. Eventually, you can paint over them with a very diluted paint. The very last step is emphasizing with ink the shapes of the most important objects and some texture flavors, like cracks in the tree bark. The drawing should be completely dry before that. This is one of the illustrations made for a course about designing fantasy architecture, dedicated to game developers, illustrators and hobbyists as well. If you would like to know how to design your own fantasy buildings, you can find it on Skillshare.